Welcome back live to the National Indoor Arena in Birmingham. The big one coming up now, Nigel Benn against Talani Sugarboy Malinga. You know, when Nigel Benn lost his WBO middleweight crown to Chris Eubank, he said he'd retire. The big question is, though, does he still harbour those thoughts? Can he still be a world champion? I don't feel like really retire. I said by the time I'm 28, I want to retire, but I don't want to retire and in like, you know, in a year's time, I think, I've still got it in me. I think, go, I want to go for it completely, 100%, until I burn out. I think the only way I'm going to give up boxing is two. One is if I got sparked on a Saturday and woke up Monday, or if I went in the ring and I really got a lot of internal damage, then I think I'd give it up. Uh, Malinga, um, I think he, he, he gave Eubanks a very hard fight, so I know he's going to come to have a fight with me. I mean, he was chasing Eubanks around, I mean, and Eubanks was running, but he knows I ain't going to be running. He knows I'll be there in front of him. And like I said he's a durable guy. He hasn't been, he hasn't been stopped. There's a lot of fighters I fight that's never been stopped. But I'm looking forward. I hope he comes, you know, throws hell for lever at me. I'll be waiting there for him to mix it with me. He knows he won't have to look for me. Well then, Chris Eubank, the man, firmly in Nigel Benn's sights. What does he think about He's the world the champ? He's the best in the world. Middleweight champion in the world. Super middleweight champion in the world. And he meant to fight everybody. And he hasn't done that. He's been fighting John Jarvis. Seven fights in seven years. I swear to God, I think I can find one of the guys down the pub, down my way, training for a year and whipping him into better shape than John Jarvis. I think, like, you know, if you want um, PG rated, go and watch Eubanks. If you want X rated, come and see Nigel Ben. I just can't believe the people that he's been fighting. Oh, he, he whipped me and Michael, you know, and I take my hat off to him. I really do, but ever since then, he ain't fought nobody. And he's, you know, he's had all these fights and he hasn't had a real mean, meaningful fight, you know. He's got to fight someone like me, Barclay, Tim Little, but no, he's been avoiding us all. I mean, this is a barbaric sport and he's world champion. Like, if, you know, if I'm world champion, I'll fight anybody because I'm the best in the world. And he's like saying he's the best in the world. Come and fight me. Give the public what they want to see. Not all these John Jarvis who's had seven fights in seven years. Fight someone like me who's been fighting all the time and who wants to have a fight with you. And stop talking about, like, you know, you're scared about what's going to happen to one of us. You ain't. You know what's going to happen to you in times of running out. So Nigel Benn with words for his arch rival, Chris Eubank. Will Chris Eubank listen? That is the $64,000 question. If they get it on, it will be a fight that will sell out any arena in Great Britain. The question is, will they get it on? Personally, I remain unconvinced while Eubank still can make money defending his WBO super middle title without meeting Nigel Benn. Tonight, though, Benn against Malinga. Malinga has never been stopped. Only defeat inside the distance, a controversial disqualification against Seki Horn. And that was avenged. Here he is. Talani Sugarboy Malinga, 32 years of age. Fought three times for the world title against Eubank and for IBF titles against Graziano Rocciagliani and Lindel Holmes. Lost them both on points. At this time, let me welcome once again everybody watching this transmission, not only all over Europe on Screen Sport, but also live on SABC in South Africa on the Prime Network in the United States all over Asia on Star. I'm David Greddup, with me at ringside, the former undefeated featherweight champion of Europe, Jim McDonald. So, Malinga in the ring with his chief second, Nick Durant, and his regular South African promoter, Mike Siegel. Also work in the corner tonight, local Birmingham man, Don Ageson, former fighter. There's Nick Durant with the long blonde hair, chief second. 
And there's Mike Siegel, South African promoter and manager just leaning over the ropes. Now, Nigel Bent always makes an impressive entrance, and I'm sure that tonight will be no different. We're normally accompanied by the promotional girls from tonight's fight sponsors, special music. Everything is dramatic when Nigel Ben enters the ring. And we prepare for the arrival of Nigel Ben with, appropriately enough, the chimes of Big Ben. And for so many of Ben's opponents, they have been the chimes of doom. Bring on the dancing girls, and let's bring on Nigel. Malinga, not impressed. Ben, well, that record speaks for itself. The two defeats against Michael Watson and Chris Eubank. Those wins have taken him to the WBO Middleweight Championship of the World. Promoter Barry Hearn. Nigel, rude boy, Ben. Well, we got away from the Dark Destroyer, he's a rude boy now. Ladies and gentlemen, promoted by Matron in association with Ron Gray Promotions and sponsored by the Daily Mirror and the Sunday Mirror, we are proud to present the main attraction of the evening, an international super middleweight contest at 12 stone, over 10 rounds each of three minutes duration. Your referee for the contest is Paul Thomas of Derby, your timekeeper, Roy Bicknell, your British Boxing Board of Control, still in charge, Dave Roden, and your matchmaker, Frank Turner. Presenting and introducing to you, in the red corner, with the red shorts, from Lady Smith Natal, the reigning South African Super Middleweight Champion, Julani Sugarboy Mariga! And ladies and gentlemen, his opponent in the blue corner with the red and the black striped shorts from Milford, the former WBO middleweight champion of the world, Major Ben! Great reception, Dave, great reception. Well, we've come to expect nothing less from Nigel. Both boxes scale 12 stone exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. Well, Alan Hughes doing the honour. Both boys weighing exactly 12 stone. That's 168 pounds, bang on the championship limit. Team Ben get out of the ring. Paul Thomas, the referee. On the first round. This is scheduled for 10. Both boys wearing red, Nigel Ben in the red boxing boots. And he's now neatly attired cycle trunks. Yes, the black cycling shorts underneath Ben's black and red trunks. And remember, Malinga has been decked before, but he's never been stopped by any of his opponents. I think he's got one stoppage on his record, which was a disqualification. Now, that was a disqualification, as we said earlier, Jim, that's right. This is basically durability against power.
can almost see the thoughts of Malinga. Just wondering how hard Nigel Bennett's. I'm sure he'll find the answer out when he hits him on the chin. Well, the crowd have come to see Ben bomb out Malinga. That's what they want. Let's not forget, though, Dave, that, you know, Malinga's a crafty old professional. He's fought for three world championships, and um, he's mixed in good class over and over again. All the days when Ben would just crush opponents inside a round, perhaps a gone. But he's a feared opponent in the super middle division and he says there's no reason he can't become a world champion at three weights middle super middle and light heavy he certainly punches like a light heavy and so Malinga's mentality must be based on the fact that you know they're calling this fight anything you could do I can do better with relation with relative to all the sort of Chris Eubank but I'm sure Malinga's thinking Anything you could do, I've seen before, because as I've already stated, he's mixed in very good class, and um, he's learned his craft. Malinga, taller than Ben, outreaches him too. Looks like a sizing up opening round, though. Inside the last ten seconds. An even opening round. And as we follow Nigel Ben back to his corner, his cornerman, that's Graham Mountain just outside the ring, Peter De Freitas. Let me just quickly explain to everyone watching this in South Africa and in the United States, in Asia too, quick word about the scoring system in British fights. Only the referee scores. There are no ringside judges. The winner of a round gets 10 points. The loser of a round gets nine and a half points. If there's a knockdown, the loser will get nine points. But the other big thing to remember is there is no mandatory eight count in British boxing rings. So only one official scores, and there is no mandatory eight count. And those are the two most important things to bear in mind as this fight unfolds. Second out, round two. Paul Thomas waiting for the belt. Here he comes. Round two. Malinga in the white boxing boots. Ben in the red boxing boots. You can almost feel a fuse ready to be lit. And if Malinga is overawed by Ben, he's not showing it. I personally don't think he is. Remember the American journeyman, Lindsay Morgan, came over last year and gave Ben a really hard workout and only lost a 10-round points decision by half a point, one round, and that was too close for Nigel Ben's comfort. The big upset if Talani Malinga were to do the same. So ben has really reconstructed his boxing style, like he used to say, he used to build my own and let shots go, as he crazily did successfully against Barkley. Now you see the more reserved Nigel Ben taking his time and pacing things out. Last op opponent we featured against Ben on Screen Sport was the Argentinian Hector Lascano. And he was quite tough, and he lasted three rounds, though. That was back in December. Since then, Ben has accounted for Dan Sherry. Didn't take him long to do that. Good shot from Meninga. Caught, Caught Ben. Flash. He did indeed. Good right hand. And let us not forget that Malinga wobbled Chris Eubank once or twice in their 12 roundup. So the thing is, you've got to remember, is this guy's mixed in top class. 
And I, I personally think it'd be better for Nigel to really steamroller him and jump on him, get the power shots on. And this is what he's trying to do in the second. If he tries to play patience with him, he could get nailed with a sucker shot. And it's too late to regret it then. Now Nigel's got to do what comes natural. Well, Ben wanted Malinga to show that he could do a better job on the South African than Chris Eubank. Malinga sees this fight as maybe another route to a fourth title fight. Absolutely. Ben's the number one contender for the WBO, and Malinga's already stated that if he can get the win on his record, he wants to return with Chris Eubank. Yeah, and let's not forget that he took Eubank to a split points decision. He's got the ingredients to turn into a real beating fight. Heartbeater, I mean. Last ten. Good all action, man. Ben working hard to the body. <laughs> we go back with Nigel Ben. In the ring with him, Graham Mountain, the former captain of the Great Britain Olympic amateur boxing team. And Talani Sugarboy Malinga. That's Nick Durant in the ring with him, just outside the ring. On the left, that's Don Ageson, local fighter, runs a gym here in Birmingham, called the Cauliflower Gym, would you believe? Let's have a pick up at the exchange here. Nigel, in his customary position of forcing his opponent onto the ropes, there you see him crunching left, but taking a good right hand in return. But you can see Malinga here coming back with a stiff jab and looking to nail Ben with a right hand. Unfortunately, oh, Nigel was ducking and diving, and it didn't land flush. But good action. Second out, round three. Third round of this scheduled 12 roundup, live at the National Indoor Arena, or 10 roundup, my apologies. 10 roundup, no titles at stake, of course, live at the National Indoor Arena in Birmingham, live all over Europe on SABC in South Africa. On Prime Network in the USA and on Star in Asia. Nigel Ben, Talani Sugarboy Malinga. Well, I noticed at the end of the last round when Nigel returned to his corner, he gave a confident wink. So maybe he's happy with the way things are going, but he's got a live wire in front of him. This guy's up for the fight, Malinga. He knows it's his last chance of the big time. Yes, this really is Malinga's last shot at the big time. If he, if he loses here, it's difficult to see what future he has in professional boxing at the age of 32. Fights in his homeland in South Africa, to be sure. But on a, on a world scene, I think not. I'll tell you what, it's... Uh tit for tat at the moment. Good right hand from Malinga. He's dangerous with that counter, that right hand. is a message Ben needs to tighten up his act. He can't walk onto that. He and we caught. know, we know he's got a good left hook too because that's the punch he really shot Chris Eubank with. I can't afford to just walk in and take them right hands flush, Nigel. And let us not forget either that Ben's two defeats have both been inside the distance. Nigel really needs to lay the hammer on him and gain some respect because Malinga's starting to get a feel for the job now. He's loading up with a right hand and causing Ben problems. This has not been a bad round by any manner of means for Malinga. Ben trying to get the jab to work. the jab but a lot of them are falling short and when they when it comes to the jab Malinga is out jabbing him. I'm interested on um, the way Malinga is so poised. 
interesting to watch and go about it. Very cool. This is a good round for Talani Sugar Boy Malinga. But he caught that right hand. That wasn't good for him. There is the bell. We will take a short break. Plenty more action in Birmingham. Join us again in a moment. And you, you get the feeling that there might just be a glimmer of an upset on the cards. Ben needs to be much, much more positive than he has been in the opening five rounds. We're in the back stretch now, round six at the National Indoor Arena in Birmingham. No, Nigel won't need telling that you know the fight is really up for grabs because there's really nothing in it at this stage. And oh. Nigel really needs to um, have some big success by nailing this guy on the chin and letting the shots go. Well, you took the words out of my mouth there, Jim. I, you were saying there's, that there's not much in it. I was going to say, if you made out a case for Malinga being in front, well, it would be difficult to disagree, maybe. Like that! He's so accurate now. You know, he's got his range, he's finding Nigel with a right hand, he's setting him up with a jab, and Nigel's standing for it. And although Ben looks to be throwing a lot of leather, if you keep your eye on Ben's jab, so many of them are falling short. Malinga's counter-punching so well. It's the accuracy of Malinga's right hand, which for me spells danger for Nigel Ben at the moment. He only throws it when it lands. Well, I know that Chris Eubank will be watching this. And Chris, I suspect you're enjoying this hugely, watching, watching your old foe having a tough time. Incidentally, talking of Chris Eubank, this title fight against Ron Essett in Portugal, June 27, live on Screen Sport, of course. You know, this type of style that Nigel's employing here, you know, would be music to Chris Eubank's ears, because to, to try and have a boxing match at this pace is not Nigel Ben. Nigel Ben is, as you know, he's the Dark Destroyer, the big puncher, who puts the fear of God in people in the same way Mike Tyson did early in his career by swarming all over them and blasting them to the boards. And in a boxing match, these guys like Meninga, Kishubank and so forth, are going to be very difficult to outbox. But I must remind people listening that the power of Nigel Ben can change things so dramatically with one hit. End of round six. Let's have a look at a couple of Malinga rights, Jimmy. Which well, Malinga's right hand, there it is, bang, right on the target. And it's the accuracy with the right hand, which I've already said, spells the danger for Nigel at this present moment in time. Round seven then, live at the National Indoor Arena in Birmingham. I honestly believe it's easier physically for Nigel to box with this style, which is a more patient style. Obviously, improving boxing, no end, but, but you know, for a success ratio, and to get these guys like Meninga out of there, I'd rather see him steamroll them. Yeah, it suits Meninga, this stuff, Dave. One nice, even pace, mid distance, sizing one another up. There's Nick Durant in the Malinga corner, watching anxiously, having a little drink out of the water bottle himself. This is better stuff from Ben. He's beginning to get accurate now, not just with a jab, but he's looking to like, set him up for the left hook as well. And he's needed to sharpen his act up. 
Very, very, very much best. so. Very much so. Because he is constantly getting out jabbed. And again, you have to ask yourself, is it really wise for Ben to move up the super middle? Is this obsession with Chris Eubank maybe a little too powerful? He's a natural middleweight, is, is Nigel Ben. This, for me, has been Ben's best friend. He's been sharper, he's been very accurate, and Malinga has just dropped his, his work rate a little bit, and he hasn't been getting on so successfully with the counters. Good right hand from Ben that time. At the moment, they're bouncing off, though. I don't know with Malinga. He's trying to use his old head to have a sort of um, steady round, as it were, for a ground stand finish. It's certainly a sharp round from Nigel Ben. And a good, quick chopping right from Malinga as Ben was coming in. He's wide open to these right hands tonight, is Ben. Mustn't get sloppy, Nigel. We led a bit of right hand there. Come a little bit square, and Malinga would have come back with a counter. He could have, uh, could have copped it. But it was a good round for Ben, despite that. Yes, very good round for Nigel Ben. In my eyes, that's been his best round of the whole contest. Certainly his sharpest. Let's just see Nigel Ben, you see, leans over to his left and throws the right hand over the top. Good quality shot, landed, more of a scoring shot than a, than a power blaster, which we've uh, come to know Nigel for. How have you got it scored at the moment, Jim? Well, after that round, it's now been pulled round again. I just had uh, Meningas, believe it or not, after four rounds, I didn't dead even, after five, I had Meninga edge, one round in front, and that's all back, level pegging. That's, that matches my own scoring, exactly, I've got them. Absolutely all square with three rounds to go. Too close for Nigel Ben's comfort. Round eight then. Nigel Ben in the red boxing boots. Malinga in the white boxing boots. Schedule for ten, remember, at the National Indoor Arena, Birmingham. Referee is Paul Thomas from Derby in England. See Nigel's corner looking up urgently. I wonder what they've instructed him in the corner because he obviously must feel the fight's too close for comfort. Well, we feel that way. And Malinga still looks very, very comfortable. I can't tell you, those of you watching in Europe and further afield, just how much of a disaster it would be to Nigel Ben's career if he lost this one. He loses number one ranking as challenger for Chris Eubanks' title. Big money, dreams of a rematch with Eubank. They'd go out the window. And with a big mortgage to pay as well. You've got the pound note signs to think of as well. I'm sure Nigel's uh, business minded in that respect, and he can't even think about coming second tonight. For me, Ben is doing too much posing and not enough punching. Good shot from Malenga on the counter. And Ben is getting a little bit bewildered in this contest. I think it'd be fair to say he's becoming slightly frustrated as well, Dave. Anything he's tried, Malenga's basically had an answer to. But I still don't think that Nigel's hit him flush with one of his knockout blows. No, Malenga's taking this round. Nigel's over-reliant on a fast left jab. But Malinga matches it. Well, before this contest, 
Ben boasted that anything Eubank could do, he could do better. Here we are in round eight. Let's not forget that in the fifth round of their world title fight, Eubank had Malinga on the floor. Ben hasn't managed to deck his opponent so far. But with his punching power, only a fool would rule that out. But with 20 seconds left in round eight, Malinga's taking this round. Yeah, Melinda certainly builds a good shot, but no, he does get through. He comes straight back with the cameras. End of round eight. Time for you at home to check your scorecards yet again. While Jim and I add ours up, we'll take another break. Welcome back again, David Brenner and Jim McDonnell with you live at ringside of the National Indoor Arena in Birmingham. This broadcast going to screen sport viewers all over Europe, to SABC in South Africa. Welcome back again, David Brenner and Jim McDonnell with you live at ringside of the National Indoor Arena in Birmingham. This broadcast going to screen sport viewers all over Europe. To SABC in South Africa, Prime Network in the USA, and of course to Star in Asia. And we perhaps, as Jimmy and I were saying in that interround break, perhaps on the brink of a real boxing sensation, the real possibility of a defeat for Nigel Ben. Nigel really needs to inject something into his work now, Dave. It's could be a disaster for him if he doesn't. I have him behind on my card. Just by one round, but behind, nevertheless. I'm sure in his own mind he must be feeling it's too close for comfort. I've got to do something. Malinga has one fault, a good crafty pro. He's whipped himself into tremendous condition and he's come to get Ben on his, on his record. A bit wild. There's you, the you frustration see, Dave was yes, talking he, about. He's, he's, I think, realises now that he might have to stop Malinga to win. He's getting wild, he's getting frustrated. Malinga is, is a different prospect to the man who fought Eubank. My goodness, he is. I don't like to see Nigel sitting on the road. Malinga's too accurate for that. Once again, Ben's head gets jerked back by that so, so accurate left jab of the South African. Ben needs to fire the up because he can't out jab this kid. ringer has got a good quality, well-schooled left jab. Two good shots from Malinga, caught Nigel flush. And Malinga is taking this round too. And Ben, having been out thought, is now in danger of being out fought. Malinga's proved more than a handful. He studied Ben, obviously, in great detail on video. His own work looks like he's going to pay off for him at the moment. He's like a nest of scorpions, Malinga, at the moment. Dangerous and all over, Ben. The crowd, well, Malinga's silenced them. Anxious whistles. Malinga. It's been a superb round for Malinga. Nigel looks very, very tired as well. He looks tired, bemused, bewildered, and dare I say it, beaten. It's, Malinga's looking to pull it out now. Last ten. Hasn't been a good round for Nigel. Well, Jimmy, we must face up to the possibility that we are going to have an absolute sensational defeat for Ben. 
You know, you can never count out a puncher like we always remind people. Nigel really needs a punch now like he's never needed one before. Because, you know, Malinga has performed above the above anything we've expected, really. Just look at the accuracy here, Dave. There's the jab to set Nigel up. There's another jab. Do we see him cross the right hand? No, not this time. But he certainly did. You can see him here just stalking in front of one another. Playing catch as can. There's Malinga. Boom. Basic shot. One, two. Right down the pipe. And that's, that's the type of performance he's been putting on. Well, let's not lose sight of the fact our scorecards don't matter. Only that of referee Paul Thomas's matter. But I have Malinga two rounds in front as we go into the tenth and final round. And but Ben needs a big, big, big round. He may need an 8, 9, 10 round. I'm sure Malinga knows he can't make mistakes himself and just keep countering. Get the left hand to work. Wait for the onslaught to relinquish and come back with the counters. Because he's found Nigel reasonably comfortable to hit, I would imagine, to what he expected. He's probably anticipated a different type of fight, Malinga. Good right hand. Flash. This could be an upset, though. I think it is. I think it's going to be. Let's not forget, you know, split verdict with Kushu Bank. And now he's going to cause the upset and get the number one position. He is far more authoritative tonight than he was against Eubank. I, I didn't think he... I, I certainly did not think that Malinga beat Eubank. I do think he is beaten. He is beating and has beaten Nigel Bent. Well, he's crowd, of, you know, his corner are believing it as well because they're absolutely rooting him on. They can hardly contain themselves, the corner. This is an evenish last round. Nigel really needs one of these blockbustering slammers now to nail this man to the board. But he hasn't really connected all fight. Fair play to Malinga. He's absolutely. Professional. You can only fight as well as you're allowed to, and Malinga hasn't allowed Ben to fight the kind of fight that we know so well. It makes you question, I know it's a crazy question, Nigel as a super middleweight as opposed to a middleweight. Well, this is what I've been saying all along, Jim. I think he's made a mistake dogging Eubank, moving up to super middle. I think he's far more effective as a middleweight. Has Malinga got the upset? I, well, we shall know soon enough. This could be a terrific night for South African boxing. Ben trying to pull it out. It's in the home straight now. It's in the lap of the gods. The last 30 seconds of the contest. And now, are we 30 seconds away from Ben's third defeat? Malinga, prepare to punch it out with him. I remember him pulling one out against the Jamaican at the Royal Albert Hall once when he needed it desperately. Oh, yes, against Anthony Logan. The stakes are the same now. Last ten. Well, the referee's the only man who knows. Oh, he's given it to Ben. Ben's got the verdict. Oh, he's, he's got a lucky, close. lucky man. The corner running straight in desperately. They feel their man done enough. A few scattered boos, I must admit. Gave Ben the last round. I made Malinga the winner. I made him the winner by half a point, one round. We will get Paul Thomas's score in a moment. But Nigel will be relieved that he's got the win. Here's the score. 97 and a half to Malinga, 98 to Ben, Ben is oh, the winner! Oh, just a half point margin. I had it half a point, that's one round in Malinga's favour. Paul and Thomas scores at half a point, one round ben in Ben's favour. Malinga, tremendous performance. It was a tremendous performance. I'm sure Nigel will go away from this contest, look through the tape and realise that he can box and perform a lot, lot better than that. But full credit to Malinga, you're only as good as you're allowed to be.
Ben throws one of his boxing gloves into the crowd. Few scattered boos, has to be said. Well, what matters is Paul Thomas's verdict. He says Ben won. That is what will go into the record books. World title challenges remain on course. But I tell you, I reckon he's uh, a bit lucky, Jim. Well, you know, you've got to be, you've got to look at it as you see it, and I'm sure Nigel will put his head on his pillow tonight and be very totally honest with himself and realise that, yes, he had a lot of luck with him tonight. Well, that's Good refereeing. the end of our transmission from the National Indoor Arena tonight. From Jimmy and me, we'll say goodbye to everybody in South Africa. We'll say tot scenes. Hope you've enjoyed it. We'll see you soon. Nigel Ben, well, he won. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>